Hi everyone. So I noticed that my coach had a little puddle under it. And so I looked up and directly above that is the steering box. And the leak is coming out of that pitman arm right there. So it's coming out of the steering box. So I'm going to take a stab at pulling that steering box out and repairing it. And I will take you along for the ride. So to get started on this, I got this mirror, which I think is pretty cool actually from Harbor Freight. And we can look up here and see what we gotta do. So to begin with, if you look at the top here, I have no idea if you'll be able to see this, but I can see this. So there's one little clip on the top we have to bend. The far side there's none. The near side there's none. And then there's one on the bottom. So once we once we use a screwdriver to bend those tabs back, we should be able to attempt to loosen this pitman arm bolt. I'm starting here because this is the hardest part of the job. So I try to start with the hardest things first. So let's see how this goes. So, if you look at this, first of all, I don't mean to dismiss anybody who has had trouble with this, but that came right off. I mean, it, it wasn't loose or anything, but half-inch breaker bar took it right off. Half-inch breaker bar with a cheater. So, it's it's not like it was loose, but it, it really came right off. It wasn't rusted on or anything. So, if you look at this, there's a mark on the spindle right there. And then there's a mark on the pit arm up here, right over there. Those are supposed to line up, and they don't, which means I need to mark my pitman arm where that mark on the spindle is. That way when I go to reassemble this, everything is correct. So I gotta get a paint marker and mark right there. So, this is the puller. It fits on there with everything in place. And you're not going to be able to use a socket. It's like 24 millimeters, so I have to use the adjustable wrench. Let's see if we can get this thing off. Funny, everybody has trouble getting the nut off, the bolt off. I get the bolt off easy. I can't get the arm off. Funny, funny, funny. I can't really tell if it's coming too. <laughs> so as these things go, one job turned into two. Um, what happened here is I had the, uh, the puller up on there and I was not able to get it off. And so I'm looking around, I'm looking around and I see all these square head screws here. And I thought, huh, somebody's been in here before. And so I took the time and effort to get in here. And lo and behold, I opened the bottom, the, uh, the generator bottom for the first time. And now we have all the clearance we could ever need. And my generator coolant hoses definitely need replaced. So, and 
That is the oil leak I've had for a long time. So I'm looking in here and I see this giant cable bundle and everything's kind of in my way and I know I could work around it, but I just feel inclined to remove this fan. So I'm going to try to do that. So I know there's, these look like Rolock bolts, two on each side. So I should be able to reach around the back and get both of those, hopefully. And uh, it kind of makes sense because I'm going to replace these generator hoses anyway. So this has turned into a bigger teardown than I thought. So the first thing I have to do is disconnect it. So I'll have to open up this and figure it out. And it's good to get experience with this anyway, because I don't know how to replace like the start and the run capacitor for the fan. Need to learn that. So I'm looking at this farther and I see now in addition to these bolts there's these three bolts on the top and bottom holding it against the wall and I'm thinking that that is how 4Travel intends you to get it out and the reason I say this is because these, these are the wires that go to the capacitor it's on the other side and there's no, I mean I try to get it off I can't tell if it's a what kind of screw is holding it in and I don't want to just rip the wires off and then not know for sure if it's like an air conditioner where it matters which polarity they have uh, some of these cap capacitors are polarized. So I'm thinking this whole assembly has to come out with these three top bolts and three bottom bolts. And, uh, you know, the radiator will fall and kind of sit. And then, you know, it'd be good to get this radiator replaced because it's leaked a little bit for a while too. So the first step is uh, to open this box and disconnect all these wires and then unbolt these and see where we get. Let me go. So somewhat annoyingly, these top and bottom bolts. So first of all, I actually tried to undo these, and these it pushes on the the fan sheet metal, and it won't come out of this eighth inch thick steel. Not sure what to do about that. So that's not happening. I tried to undo the. I, I was able to see that this is a square mount, square bolt, square screw that is holding the fan capacitor on. I was not able to get started on that. So what I decided to do was um, these have nuts on the back. So I took out the docking light. I think I'll be able to reach them all that way. And so once I can get something on the back of them, I should be able to spin them free. So that's what we're going to do now. So these bolts that hold the fan on come out here and this one bottom one this is stuck man I tried a PB blaster I sat there and wrenched on it with the impact gun that's not coming off so it's time for the final solution So this thing was really tight and it was almost stuck like glued onto this so I had to pry it off and then I'm sure it's the same deal on the bottom but once it's on the top I'll be able to pry at it pretty good and then this whole thing should be able to just come straight out this way probably rotating. Why are you taking that box out? Make space so I can rotate it up. Wouldn't it be easier to take a break until it's done raining? Thank you. 
complete one thing. One thing, that's all. Don't like standing out in a day and getting literally nothing done. It's very frustrating. Many, many minutes later. I put you back on. Oh. Thank you. God, camera woman. You'll be back on, sir. I'm like a real YouTuber now. You got it. <laughs> back on, sir. Can I the camera assistant? You the camera assistant? Yep. All right, so we'll try to use that. Get that out of the way. And then we will try to rotate, like rotation. Is it hooked up over there with the hose? No, I mean, what do you mean? It's disconnected. Oh, I see that there's this part. It's a wee bit heavy. I'll break your back. the lip and everything. Yeah, just tilt it out. There you go. There you go. There you go. Yay, I did something! I did a thing! Why did you not want to do it this way? Why did you want to take more stuff out? Oh, I'm delirious. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. That's oh a now I have access to everything. That's a big fan. Look at all this room for activities. All right. Is there some wasp nests in there, we're done, too? Yeah, we're done for the day. So this is what it looks like after this is out. This radiator is only being held up by the fact that it's kind of stuck to that rubber. Um, but all these hoses are getting replaced. The radiator looks all right. We'll run with that for now. Now that I know just how easy it is to get this fan out. Ha ha ha. And uh, there's the steering box. And, uh, and all these wires are still in the way, but that's okay. We'll figure that out. You can see it's not leaking on this side, it's leaking all on the other side. Anyway, time to clean up. Alright, we're back. It's a new day. It's much cooler. Hopefully I can maintain a more level head. So, the seals came. And I don't know if I mentioned this last time, but I... DSD, I believe his name was Doug, won four forums. He posted about his success changing these seals in place. And um, that's kind of given me the, the confidence to give it a try myself. Especially because I have this huge access from the generator side and then once I remove this box, it'll be easier on this side, too You know, so that's only you know a couple little bolts there move this out of the way One of the things he mentioned was that the fact that it drips oil the whole time And it does that because the reservoir all the way in the back of the coach is at a higher level than this So it's the siphon effect it may he says it made it very more difficult So I have hydraulic plugs, so I'll be able to take these hoses off and, uh, and plug them up. So I figured I may as well give that a try. So yeah, because the fans go on, accessibility is very good. I have to clean up everything in here. And um, you know, because I'm not gonna try to remove this, this wire, this cable bundle is no longer in the way of anything. And it's really not, you know, now because you can kind of reach through. These seals have a Teflon lip and then Teflon outer side. And then they have the black inside, and supposedly that's not what's in there. Supposedly from the factory, it was just a one-piece seal. So this is an improved part. This came from eBay. This is an eBay link that was shared on four forums. We're going to try this part, and supposedly this lip, the, the, the brown lip, goes to the inside, and the white Teflon goes to the outside. Now, these seals are actually much harder to install than they look. These are hydraulic seals, so they're very tight, and um, they expand out to the bore, and they're, they're pretty rigid. So... They make a tool called a seal installer, and the way these work is they have a pin here and two pins on the outside, and the the outside pins distort the seal and make it kind of like a kidney shape. And you put it in place with these pliers, and then you let it go, and it expands out to fill the bore. So this, these are Teflon outer, outer reinforcements. You're not supposed to use those kind of seal install tools on a Teflon seal. So I didn't buy those, and I know this type of seal can be rolled into place kind of. But it's more difficult than DSD on full form said he you know spent kind of hours trying to do this one-handed in place I am hoping that given my current access right here you know I can do it 
I can reach around the back and do it that way. I can reach through the bore on this way, possibly. I mean, that's pretty deep. I'm hoping that it's going to be easier for me from here without this fan here. We shall see. These hoses look to be in good shape with no abrasion, which is good because if there's anything abrading on them, they go and then they blow and it happens when you're in the middle of nowhere and it's not good. Ask me how I know. So I'm twisting up this hose because this is seized to this. This is supposed to swivel. And I'm having trouble getting them to swivel. Yeah, I'll try, I'll try to spray some WD-40 on there or something. Using two wrenches? Yeah, you have to. Oh, my. Because what happens is this hose is getting all twisted up. Ooh. And we don't want that to happen because we like the hose. We don't want to replace the hose. So we have to untwist it. Okay. Okay. So, try as I might, I was unable to get this off. Rather, I was able to get it spinning, so I tightened it back up. We're going to try it with the oil dripping out. I'm going to start taking these bolts off. These are 18, it appears. And relatively tight. I am actually making progress with this. I think it's almost out. It's gonna be a giant mess, hopefully not. Hopefully I can catch it right before it comes off. Chain, chain plier is definitely a good idea for this. If you had it out of the coach, you'd be able to just tap it off, but not so easy right now. See the O-ring coming. Oh, look at that. Pretty good. Right into my funnel.
on the sector shaft. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this, but there's two little dots. And then on the sector shaft itself, there's a dot, and that dot goes in between those two other dots. That's how you index it. I can see it. I'm talking to the camera, buddy. Interesting there, there's some kind of goop there. I don't know what that is. Water, maybe? Water and black goop. Interesting that it stayed in there and didn't circulate. All right, so to figure out how the seal works, we're gonna work in the cap first. It looks like it could be welded on. I don't know how it's welded on because people say they leak. So. All right, so typically the way you get a seal like this out is with a pick. You want to try to be careful not to damage anything. So yeah, the, the inner seal's in there. It's better come up now. This is going to be a lot of fun to do on the other one, I'll tell you that. It seems like that's half a seal. That's really pliable compared to the new ones. Yeah, I think the other half is still in there. Look at that, it's just breaking in pieces. Brittle. Gotta get all those little pieces out without messing everything up. All right, well, you kind of get the point. Uh, you got to scrape all the stuff out of there without really damaging the bore, because if you put a bunch of gouges in there, the oil might be able to creep past the back of the seal. Probably want to do this with the bearing facing down so that none of these little tiny chunks get up in the bearing. You know, when we're done with this, we'll have to get this cap off and probably flush this out with like brake cleaner. I'll come back when I'm a little further along. So I went to the other side and I gave the sector shaft a little tappy tappy just with my hand and I started pushing right through. So I should be able to not get a grip on it. Oh boy, that's a heavy piece of steel. Now I should be able to get in there and pull it out from the other side. Get all this goop. Look at all that goop. No goop. Removes the goop. So I can't quite sit up inside the generator bay here, so I have to kind of reach up. And I'm not blind. I can see pretty well, but I am blind on the bottom part. You can see all the blue. That's like that seal disintegrated. On the other one, it was more chunky. This one, it's more of a paste. Yeah, I think that the blue part of the seal is entirely disintegrated. Is it in there? It might be in there. I think it's in there. Yeah. 
I think. Yep, there is a piece. So you gotta peel out all these little blue chunks, and we're gonna need a mirror. I'm gonna make liberal use of a mirror on this side. See what we're doing. So I wouldn't say we're blind, but we're pretty close because I can't sit up in this generator. If I actually pulled the generator out of the drawer, this would be like pretty awesome, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Question will be installing the new seal. That's gonna be tough. But maybe not. I mean, because you can roll it right in the edge here. DSD said this was really sharp that it could indie burr it. It's sharp, but it's not burred, it's just a sharp edge. And I'm just, I'm not really trying to gouge this. I'm just giving it light pressure to try to find where that seal is. I should say the chunks of the seal. We gotta get all that out or the new one won't sit right. I can see how doing this from the ground and reaching up might be potentially preferable here. Sorry about my blinky light. That's a that's a Harper Freight Braun light, and it was very expensive. It was like thirty dollars, twenty five dollars. Sadly, it's garbage. It's not good. This is a lot like one of the dentist. Looks like this might have been seeping for a little while, but it definitely wasn't. Cause I I look at this all the time. All right, I'm going to take you off the camera and I'm going to do this for a lot longer until I get that all cleaned of debris. I might even actually take a vacuum to it. I think a vacuum could be a good idea or uh, compressed air to blow it out. Potentially all of the above to try to get that, that seal bore as uh, debris free as possible. So the inside seal, the pitman arm, is actually pretty easily accessible from this side. You want to do both sides because what you want to have is like a hooked pick like this. You want to just take that in and run it around the inside of the groove. You want to feel metal the whole time. And you can see down there, there's a chunk. So you take that chunk, you just throw that out the back. Maybe use a straight pick for that. You want to make sure to clean your tools often. There's no grit or sand or dirt or anything getting in there. You would hope that it would get flushed up pretty quickly, but and this oil filling everything up, which doesn't make everything super easy. There's a little seal chunk in there. Hello. I saw you. You want to keep doing that until you get everything. And then what I'm going to do is I have these things called Kim wipes and they are like a lint free cloth. And you know, I'm not exactly in a clean room environment here outside in the coach, but I try to not introduce anything into here if possible. So I'll use Kim wipes to wipe out that bore and I'll use the pick to press the Kim wipe into the bore to try to get any, any crap that's in there and then I'll follow that up with some brake clean which will just drain out and brake clean if you don't know it it flashes off and it's supposed to leave no residue or no anything and it will break down the oil but all of that oil that breaks down is draining out so no worries there and the idea is to flush out anything that might get in that bearing and the thing is the seal chunks probably won't hurt that bearing because they're so soft uh, the bearing will just just smush them into a paste um, but we want to make sure to get out any kind of sand or grit so the sector shaft for instance we're gonna have to clean really well with brick cleaner and make sure it's perfectly pristine clean and you know with clean gloves and then we'll coat it with a layer of a bit of oil and shove that back in there between these two indexing points I'm gonna keep at the seal because the camera's in the way unfortunately so I have to I have to boot you out of here but I'll come back so my new nice good mirror doesn't fit in here, but 
my old ratty one does. So you can come in here and you can inspect the seal bore. So I see it's just a little grit, a little grit, little fine chunks of the old seal. But you can see there's no major pieces left. So now we're going to do our Kim wipes and brake cleaner. In the, earlier in the video, the, the previous day when I was doing this, when it was much, much hotter outside, it's beautiful weather today. It's like 78 or 77, I'd say. Um, but earlier that time, you could hear bass in the, in the video. And that bass is, uh, I live next to a church. And I didn't think anything of it when I bought this house. But it's like one of those mega churches. And they, I found an article about them. They specifically looked for the, the strongest base system that like money could buy. It was abs it's absolutely wild. And um, it's super, super strong. So we'll try to put this in here. This is not going as well as I'd hoped. Try to clean this bore out. So this is a right angle pick against Kim wipe. And you see, did get a bunch of stuff out. Yeah, I mean I'm pretty happy with that. There's like a, a residue, but I mean that in my opinion that should cause at worst a seep like a slight wetness and there's a little chunky let me get that out of there I think we got it or we just pushed it around Bridge cleaner push. Another set of new gloves, and then I think I'm gonna to try to put this seal in from this side. Let's see what happens. Let's see how much I can screw this up. All right, I got you guys a new camera angle, hopefully a bit more out of my way. Camera's upside down now. So here are the seals. And let's begin. How hard are you gonna be? I don't know if this is going to go well. Well, even if it goes well, I don't know if you'll be able to see it one way or the other. So I put it in with one hand, and now I'm rolling it in with the other. Oh, I think it's in. It feels weird up in here. What's going on in here? Like it rolled over or something. Yeah, it did. So the white is out. And then it rolls over up in here. Something happened. I think it rolled over in an unexpected way, right around here. Let's see if I can yank it back out without using any tools. We get it to rotate over. It's like stuck on a lip, it feels like. Try from the top. I really didn't expect this to happen. We want to push this part in. It's so it's like it's rotated over. You're not gonna see this, but it's like rotated over in the bore. It's not seated right. I 
can see why DSD recommended extra seals because you know you might want to have a practice run. <laughs> All right, I've manipulated this enough that I think I gotta take it out and inspect it. See if I killed it or not. All right, like I said, hit it from both sides. Oh, wow. Makes it easier. Ah, yeah, we killed it. Teflon seal broke away from the other seal. Maybe it's supposed to do that, I don't know. Maybe that's actually what happened to it. I don't think I killed it. I think it's just like a two-piece seal. Maybe I killed it. Doesn't seem like it was adhered all that well. If at all. Do I have this upside down? I wouldn't think so. But maybe, maybe there's like a lip in there that this seats into. Oh, yeah, I think so. Look at that. Right back in. So I didn't kill the seal. It's just that the Teflon ring comes out real easily. I'll take this out. I'll wipe it down with a Kim wipe and inspect it real well. And we'll try again with this seal. I don't think I should, I don't think I should move on to the next seal unless I actually damage this one. Yeah, I don't see any reason not to use this seal, so. Let's give it another shot, shall we? I'm gonna push it in and we're gonna get it from the other side with the other hands. All right, so I'm gonna push this in and I'm gonna try to push one side into the hole and then roll the other side in. Hopefully this time without breaking the bond apart between these two. So I'm using my other hand from the back, which may make this easier. Try to be a little bit more gentle this time now that I know these like to separate. Maybe get the top in first, that way I can actually see the part that's not seated right. So he did the same thing again. It like came apart, fell into the hole. Then like rotated around. Not what I'd call easy. Definitely a puzzle. And this should be really easy for me because I have access to both sides. Like, not blind or anything. I got all the visibility and access in the world. Should be easy, and it's not. Um, so as it turned out, I spent a bunch of time talking to a camera that's not up and running. But, so I got the seal in, and how I did it was I put in first the, the black seal, and then I seated the white Teflon seal into it. And you know, when I run my finger around, it feels perfect. There's no bumps or ups and downs. And the seal's covered with oil and everything feels pretty good. So now I have to move on to reinsertion of the sector shaft. And, and oh, what happened was the, the card in the camera was full. So I was sitting here working on it and I got it seated and everything and it was triumphant. And yeah, it wasn't filmed. So here we go. And apparently my flashlight is kaput. So cleanliness is still the name of the game here. So this is how I'm gonna approach this. I'm gonna take every piece out of here and set it on this mostly clean piece of cardboard. And then take this out, empty all this out into a garbage pile somewhere. Here we are, and we're in between the two timing marks, and so now we do the cap, cap seal. Alright, so hopefully you can see this, we're going to check the other seal now.
Well, that side went a little better. That one is one piece, no problem. Now all we gotta do at this point is inspect it for dirt, and clean it, and then push it back in. Hopefully there's no sand or... Oh look, see that's not in there, right? You can see right there. I think that's good now. You gotta push the Teflon off to the front so it's flush. There's really no way to have that in there wrong, it looks like. Okay, that looks good now. Everything is seated in there nicely. Now we push this onto the end of the sector shaft and cross our fingers. We gotta lube up the seal, so we'll rotate it around a little bit. The O-ring. Now we'll start pushing. There we go. And now, gotta push it in past the Okay. Maybe get some oil on that. Not sure about this one. Hopefully you just push. I'm not sure if you push and rotate or just push. All right, so I'm having trouble getting this seated, so I grabbed a um, four pound sledge and a two by four. So we're gonna try that. Just using a hammer gently and that wasn't working. There we go. So we had some kind of cap on this, plastic cap, and it was glued with what looks like a an RTV. So I'll have to uh, maybe read here that with great stuff, something like that. Whatever I can find in the garage. I also have to figure out a torque spec for this. I know that you can actually leave this open. I've seen other trucks and stuff have this open. But I'm gonna close it because maybe that'll help prevent it from leaking. So this right here is the bleed valve. We can actually open this and it'll slowly fill up in here with oil. We won't have to do any bleeding at all. So I got everything back in. I cleaned on the other side and I cleaned out in all the individual splines on the pitman arm the gear that the pitman arm attaches to. I kind of wiped everything down. The one problem I have is that I was going to open the bleed valve and uh, start the coach and bleed it that way. Uh, it's not looking like that's gonna happen because 
um, it's it started to kind of try to strip out and I used an eighth of an inch Allen key and the other the metric size that fit in there was three millimeter but three millimeter seemed a little loose and one eighth seemed exactly correct but it uh it kind of rotated and stripped and you know I'm not gonna risk having that break so you know the so I think I'm gonna start the coach and uh, kind of let it run and let it idle which should fill this up and put purge some of the air out especially because the fittings are up high it should bleed itself out just as it circulates a little bit and then I'll just kind of give it I'll start steering it gently I don't have you know the, the greased cutting boards and I don't really have a way to lift the front of the coach so um, the, the name of the game is to kind of you know try to get oil in there try to get oil circulating and and see if it leaks and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the pitman arm one without the dust boot and then I'm gonna tighten that bolt down and I'm gonna do that without the dust boot and I'm gonna tighten that bolt you know not too well just like reasonably tight the other thing I have to do still is I have to torque these down I gotta look up the torque spec uh, I just heard the FedEx truck who just brought me my new three-quarter torque wrench so uh, that's how we're gonna do that um, these are the cat bolts and these are, I've just measured with my caliper to be 1.5 thread pitch by I think it's an M10 because I think how you measure a bolt is you measure on the inside of the threads the thinnest part and that's just over 10 millimeters so I think this is it and it says bearing cap cover all M series is M10 by 1.5 and it says it's 53 to 64 foot pounds so we are going to torque it to that I'm trying to get this thing torqued this is my torquing contraption it's this uh, long line of wrenches and then my Quinn digital torque wrench set to 57 foot pounds So we'll do the first bolt here, which requires a swivel. And we'll pop that pitman arm on. And again, we're going Without the dust boot here on purpose, we're going to put this on somewhat loosely. Start up the coach, attempt to bleed the steering and see if it leaks. And if it doesn't leak, pull the pitman arm back off and we will put the dust boot on. This is the dust boot. It goes behind. Uh, it was pretty crusty, but I cleaned it all up. And this bolt has this, it's captured so I can't take it off, but it's got a thing with tabs on it. And two of the tabs stick way out. They go into little grooves on the pitman arm. So, like that one goes in there, and that one goes in there. So, like now that's captured in there, yeah, I think this is right. So, we're just going to tighten this down to a, a reasonable amount for test purposes. I'm just gonna leave it like that because I know it's not going anywhere for the five minutes of testing to see if we got huge leaks. Oh man, I didn't actually record it. <laughs> anyway, we got in the motorhome and we, uh, the wife was here and we uh, did left, right, left, right. We checked it all out and and uh, yeah, it, it's not peeing anymore. Uh, hopefully, there's no drips either. I didn't see any drips, so now we have to take this back off. And um, and then uh, we have to use the, the pitman arm tool to push this back off, and then we have to put the dust boot on. Okay, I wish that went that easy the first time around.
Now I get to introduce you to the monster. This is a three quarter inch torque wrench. Um, it's 40 inches long. It's like the size of a small child. And we will use this to torque the pivot arm bolt back on. All right. Let's see if the mega wrench was a good idea or a bad idea. And I got the shorter one because there was actually longer ones. And I'm not convinced will fit in the space between this bolt and the ground. tighter than I can do and it hasn't clicked yet so I have a feeling this got to go one more little bit and it's done well, maybe not trouble hitting 350 it's at about 330 it's definitely not lined up where it was I'm gonna tap down that one and that one that I think should hold it that top one is definitely hooked and uh, I believe that concludes the steering box. Now it's time for generator service. 